Microsoft just dropped some massive Bing AI updates, including plugins, no more wait list, a chat history and multimedia answers. And you might look at this and start wondering why am I still paying for chat GPT when Bing has all of this? Let's take a look at the most game changing updates to Bing chat. The first major update is plugin support. Now, just like chat GPT, which has been very slowly rolling out plugins, Bing is going to have similar plugins as well. That's going to extend the features and the capabilities of the model. Plugins will help you do things like book flights, reserve tables at your favorite restaurant, play games or order food. Now ChatGPT rolled out plugins back in March, but they're doing it very slowly and only to paid ChatGPT plus subscribers who have also signed up for the waitlist. Now I've been a plus subscriber for I think a month and a half now, and I signed up for the waitlist for plugins within a day or two of it being announced, and I still don't have access to anything. But as far as I know, they're starting to roll out some of them like the browser plugin, but I don't have that yet. And who knows how long it's going to be until I get it. But with Bing announcing plugins, we might actually get the access to that before paid users of ChatGPT even do. And the big bonus here is that Bing is free. It's available to anybody and ChatGPT is not. So there's definitely some competition brewing there. Microsoft hasn't given a lot of information about what plugins are going to be available when this launches, but they have shown us a few sneak peeks with OpenTable and Wolfram Alpha. Now these are both plugins that are available with ChatGPT as well if you have access, but they're going to help expand the capabilities of the AI model. So with OpenTable, you can make a dinner reservation so I can search for restaurants in my area. And then the option to use the plugin will show up, which will allow me to use OpenTable to book my reservation with one of these restaurants. Wolfram Alpha is a little plugin that helps you create visualizations of data and get answers to complex science, math, or database questions by getting it to make calculations for you. Now, out of the box, Bing and ChatGPT aren't very good at math or calculating, but with a plugin like Wolfram Alpha, it can do a lot more. The second major update is that Bing no longer has a waitlist because it is an open preview, which means you don't have to go sign up for the waitlist and wait to get added. You can go and use Bing right away through your Microsoft account. Now you will need to use the Microsoft Edge browser in order to use Bing chat and go on over to the chat tab and you can start using Bing and chatting and asking it questions. A hot tip if you're new to this is if you're using the more creative mode with Bing, it is actually operating with GPT-4. Now at this point, GPT-4 on ChatGPT is only available to the paid users of ChatGPT+. So this is a way you can access the more advanced model for free. So I've been using Bing a lot because of that and because it's also connected to the internet, which ChatGPT is not until it gets access to the plugin that lets it do that. But Bing out of the box, GPT-4 and connected to the internet. Win-win. Major update number three is chat history and persistence. Microsoft says this is one of the most requested features and I can definitely see why. So up until this point, Bing chat has had no way for you to save the chats you have had. You can't go back and open it once you've closed a chat session, which is one of the reasons ChatGPT has been more of a front runner because you have all of your chats saved there on the left-hand side and you can go back and reopen them and refer to them again after. But Bing, until now, did not have that. But with this update, you're going to have a history of your past chats that you can go back into, continue where you left off. And it'll also have something that Microsoft is referring to as persistence. I'm a little shaky on what they mean by the explanation here, but they're saying that Bing chat can remember previous chats and queries across sessions and devices. So I think that means you'll be able to refer to other sessions you've had with Bing and it'll be able to pull that information and the context. It's just making it a lot easier to take all the information and refer back to old chats and essentially access information in the most convenient ways possible. So you can grab everything you need and get it to do whatever you're doing. You'll also be able to export your chats and share them with other people. So this is opening the doors to collaborate with other people and the AI at the same time, which opens up a lot of new possibilities. So right now when you use Bing, you can see the little one out of 20 indicator on the bottom, which means you have 20 shots to interact back and forth with it before you have to start a new chat. And then it loses all memory and reference of what you've been talking about. But with this new feature, with these multi-session feature and the persistence, you should be able to refer back to past chats with Bing, and then it'll be able to 
know about the context from those conversations. Another feature here is that you're going to be able to start a chat with Bing and then as you move around the web and go to different pages, you'll be able to keep your chat open here in the sidebar and continue on your chat while you browse the web and add new things to talk about. This opens up a lot of possibilities, especially for things like research and expanding on ideas as you find new information. Major update number four is video and image in your answers. So now Bing chat will now be able to answer not only in just text, but by adding in video, by adding in images, charts, and other visual media. So this can include things like images and photos. So in this example, they asked whether a saguaro cactus has flowers, and then it comes up and shows them a picture of what that flower actually looks like as part of its answer. Bing will also be able to answer with things like showing a map of a location, charts and graphs, for example, a comparison chart of different products that you're asking about, or share with you a video tutorial of a skill you're wanting to learn. Bing has had a Dolly integration built in for a little while now in which you can ask it to generate images directly inside of Bing. So you don't have to go into mid journey or stable diffusion to do that. But that is also getting an upgrade and you'll now be able to ask it to do that in various languages. So if English is not your mother tongue, you can speak to it in whatever language and get it to generate images in that language. Another minor update on the topic of images and multimedia is multimodal chat, where you're going to be able to do things like upload images and use that as part of your prompt and references for any searching or chatting you do with Bing. So when are these updates actually available? I asked Bing and it up and lied to me and said most of them were already available and it had me running around updating my browser and clearing my cache in order to see if it would work, but it just made that up. I couldn't find a direct answer, so I did some digging on Twitter and found this straight from the official Bing Twitter. So it looks like the waitlist goes away sometime today, May 4th, and the rest of the features like the chat history are coming together shortly or soon. So whatever that means. There's a bit of contradictory information in that when somebody had asked if they get access to the chat history, Bing said you could sign into your Microsoft account to see it. So I haven't seen it myself yet, but looking at these replies, it looks like it'll be available very soon. But with these kind of things, you never really know. But let me know in a comment below, which of these features are you most looking forward to? I know for me, I'm specifically looking forward to testing out the plugins because as a ChatGPT Plus user who has signed up for the waitlist for plugins, I still don't have any of them and I'm really looking forward to testing them out and seeing what they can do. I'd love to know what you guys are looking forward to as well. Sticking to a couple of important rules when you are crafting prompts for either ChatGPT or Bing is the difference between getting really mediocre results and getting results that are much better than almost everybody else. To help you do that, I've put together a convenient little PDF, the AI Prompts Cheat Sheet, which you can download at the link in the description below. It's full of a bunch of useful prompts as well as examples. So you know exactly how you can use them to get the most out of either Bing or ChatGPT. So that was the scoop on all of these new updates coming to Bing. I hope you found something in there that was useful. If you're interested in more tips on how you can get the most out of Bing chat, then check out this video next where I walk you through 15 different prompts, examples, and structures that you can use to do a whole bunch of really practical, useful things using Bing. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.